your guitar. Hello, this is a video I didn't actually set out to make. Originally I was just intending to do a custom build project and uh, show you how I put the strat together and uh, the wiring scheme I'd chosen. But what actually happened was I started with a guitar body that I bought off eBay that someone else had already finished in oil. And when I saw it, I realised I hadn't done that great a job of it and I hadn't really stained it in order to get the, the flame out of the, the top. And so I felt really I should try and refinish it. But as it had already been oiled, I wasn't sure if that was going to even work. Um, it has worked. I'm very pleased with the end result. It took me about a week and a half. And I'll tell you now, it's really all in the prep. You really, really, really need to rub the wood down carefully because unlike paint, which were kind of conceal marks, the oil brings out every single floor. And uh, it was the extra prep that I didn't realise I was going to have to do that really took me the time. That and putting on two coats of oil a day for a week just to get the kind of even finish I was looking for. Anyway, I hope this is of interest to you. Enjoy. Again, I'm working with the grain here. Basically just trying to soften up and, if you like, degrease the whole waxed or oiled surface. It seems to be doing the trick, but until it's all thoroughly dried out and then on a small sample area, I've applied some stain just to see if it will take evenly, then I don't really know whether I've done the trick or not. I've now removed what I'm hoping is the vast majority of the oil from the finish, but to be sure I'm going to use some 240 grade glass paper and actually sand down the surface of the wood. 240 isn't by any means the finest uh, grade, but it's not uh, you know excessively rough either. There are corns starting to build up on the abrasive paper, which indicates to me that it's not just pure wood I'm sanding off it's actually oil as well because you wouldn't expect to get these sort of build-ups, hard uh, build-ups, unless there was something other than pure wood underneath the sander. I've done my sanding down. This is a good time to get rid of as much dust as I possibly can. This is a water-based wood dye. It's a good idea to give it a really good shape before you get started so that the contents of the tin is distributed evenly. Now, one of the reasons that I paid particular attention to the area that will end up under the scratch plate is that, well, partly because I really dislike it when you take the scratch plate off an instrument and all of a sudden you see that it's not as well put together and finished as, as you thought it was. It's, almost as if the maker didn't really care as much as you hope. But another reason is that under the scratch plate there is going to be my test area for the dye, the moment of truth that will tell me if I've got all the oil out of the wood. And uh, so I'd like to see that that's going to come good before I do the whole body. Okay, well, what we discover from this is even under the scratch plate here, this is going to go on quite evenly. I can see just around the pickup surrounds, there's an area that isn't darkening down so much, and that presumably is where there's still a little bit of oil left. But as for the main areas where I've gone out of my way to rub it down, I think that's going to look fine. Some of you might be thinking, wouldn't it have been easier to use a brush to put the stain on? But the point is, this is only a light wood cap on an ash body, <coughs> so I've had to be reasonably careful not to get the colour over the edge and onto the ash. And I found that easiest to do with the with the kitchen towel. Um, equally, you might think, "Ooh, that looks a bit streaky." Well, yeah, it does. But once it's dried, and I've rubbed it down a bit, I think you'll find that the effect is quite different. I've left the wood dye to dry overnight. It is now perfectly dry and if you have a good look at it, it looks really poor, blotchy. Uh, it looks like a kid done it to be honest, but that's fine for reasons that I'll show you in just a moment. I'll get myself 
a new clean bit of 240 grade paper. Tear off a bit here. Because what I'm going to do, in fact, is sand most of this off to bring up the underlying flame underneath. And in so doing, all the unevenness that you see in that first thick case of wood dye will start to disappear because most of that dye is coming back off again. And what you're left with is a much paler wood with a much deeper looking grain than we had before we started. I've actually damped the surface of the grain slightly, which, as well as bringing the grain out a little bit for your benefit, uh, also brings the, the surface grain up on the wood a little bit. So as I rub it back down again with this thousand grade wet or dry paper, it will really get very much smoother when it dries out. It also means that when I apply the next layer of wood dye, it'll tend to go on more evenly, which as the next layer is going to be a colour wash that I want to remain in place is important. Cleaned up the work area and the guitar body, get rid of uh, surplus dust. I've done a, a diluted mix of wood dye, it's about 50% the strength of the first coat I put on, the one that I rubbed off. Now I'm just going to damp down the wood here, which shows up the grain rather nicely, but also essentially uh, evens out the porosity of the wood, which should help, I believe, to even out the absorption of the dye, which should make for an even more even looking coat. But you can get a, a bit of a sense of what it's going to be like when it's done. So I'm just going to take myself some very soft paper towel, dip it well into the diluted dye and start applying it. As you can see the effect compared to the first coat I put on is a lot more subtle. Since the last time I showed this to you um, there's been a lot of rubbing down, a lot of applying new um, wood dye, rubbing down again. But all of that is um, essentially repetition, so there's no point in making it sit through the whole lot. Uh, I've now got to a point where I'm basically satisfied with the finish I've got. And so hopefully I should be rubbing this down for the final time before I oil the top. I will need to clean up very carefully around the edges here where um, the stained maple joins the... Um, the ash, uh, but I'll show you that as we go along. At the moment I'm just going to be rubbing down very carefully, trying not to undo all my good work so far. Um, you'll notice I'm not even using a sanding block, I'm just using the back of my hand because we really are talking about taking tiny amounts off at this stage. And I'd rather be sure that there's no uh, hard edges or anything like that. I'm having to be very careful here on the edges that I'm sanding the unwanted stain uh, off the ash and not the stain I do want off the maple because otherwise it's all going to get a bit messy. So there isn't actually much stain in the wrong place but I'm being very careful about how I take it off. I feel I've defined the line between the two woods pretty much as best I can. So I'm now just using the really fine wet or dry paper to take out any scratches left by the 240 glass paper. Because I could have tested how it was going to come up by wetting it, but I've just done the final rubbing down, so I really don't want to get water on it but have been wetting it as I go along while I was staining to get the most even finish. And all of a sudden, boys, we have flame. It's looking good. In fact, it's looking so good, I think what I might do 
is change the shape of the scratch plate so you can see, you know, cut the scratch plate round here so you can see this bit of flame as well because, you know, it took, uh, well it's a nice piece of wood and it's taken quite a lot of effort to get it to this stage so why not show it off? This by the way is described as superior Danish oil. Um, what it's superior to I wouldn't like to say but it claims to have um, a formulation designed to reduce fading due to UV which having got the body to this state I would prefer that it didn't uh, fade. I'm pretty pleased with the end result. It's got quite a subtle sheen to it and it's really brought the flame out in a way that it hadn't been brought out before. So all in all I'm, I'm pleased with my efforts even though it took quite a bit longer than I thought it might. I'd certainly recommend this as a finishing method to anyone because uh, it avoids things like having a spray booth uh, and providing you put in the hours on prepping the wood and also putting on layer after layer of oil you should get a very good end result.